everyone, it's Pam from Glam Junk Journals, and today I would like to do a tutorial continuing on with my grungy theme. I am calling this my grungy open spine envelope pocket booklet. Now there's a mouthful for you. And I gotta say, I was inspired by Ruby and Pearl XO. Um, I watched the video and I thought, that is so cool. I'm gonna have to try that. And I am gonna put a little bit different spin on it and hopefully, and I am confident, it will turn out marvelous. So what you're gonna need for this is two envelopes. And I just, you know, grab some from my stash, it doesn't matter. Um, I collect envelopes and it could be a business reply envelope, whatever you have around. And if you don't have a, an envelope, just use a heavier duty piece of cardstock. So you're gonna need two envelopes and then some patterned paper. And this is a uh, paper that I got from the Graphics Fairy. This particular gorgeous pattern is Delicate End Papers. It's from their premium membership website. And this is Sea Green Backgrounds. Now I pulled those two together just because I thought, number one, I love to mix patterns, and number two, the colors just complement each other. And so you're gonna need two pieces of patterned paper. This was printed just on regular copy paper because you want it kind of thin. Um, I wouldn't use a heavy duty cardstock with this because it's going to make um, the envelope cover, and I'll show you what I'm talking about, a little too thick. So besides that, two envelopes, and let me show you, I did do one side of my cover. And I did um, add my little bits of ephemera in this, but I'll take those out. And there it is. Now this is going to be the cover of my booklet. So what it is, is an envelope that has been fully lined. I don't know if you guys can see that right there and covered on both sides. Now I did sew around the edge, that's completely optional, you don't have to do that. And I added an envelope here and some trim, because you know me, I love collecting these old envelopes. So anyways, we're gonna make the other half of the cover, and then we're gonna put the booklet together. And oh, let me tell you one other thing. So we're gonna make the covers first, or cover, because I already made one. And for the inside of your booklet, I am continuing on my grungy theme. So you're just gonna need some papers, and I'll show you what I've gathered here, for the inside of your booklet. So I've got, you know, dictionary pages, uh, a bag, paper bag, ledger page. Check this out. Central Railroad Company of New Jersey receipt for packages. Cool, authentic ephemera here. Obon March, Paris, another beautiful vintage magazine. Here's some of that writing booklet. You know, um, distressed pages, uh, watercolored pages, and then um, a magazine page. Isn't that cool? I don't know if I'm going to use all that. So I just gather some things up that, to me, uh, lend themselves to the grungy look that I'm going for in this particular journal. So that being said, let's get going. So my envelopes were very similar in size. This one is a little bit larger, but that's okay because I'll show you how to correct that. And what you're going to want to do is open it up on three sides so one two three this has been the flap has been glued down so what i'm going to do is just open up the other two sides and i don't have a letter opener do you guys have a letter opener so i just use actually you could use an exacto knife but thinking ease of operations here i'm just going to cut it down with my guillotine cutter that's right off camera here. So I'm just gonna take the very edge off of both sides. 
and open it up. Ta-da! How cool is that? So, let's see. It's still a little large, but we're going to cut it down. So, easy enough, you guys. We're going to line the pay the excuse me the envelope which is going to be your envelope cover for your booklet we're going to line it with the delicate end papers on the interior and to do this you can use glue stick you can use double-sided tape you could use any other uh, liquid glue this is my art glitter glue i'm going to have to get a new one of this because it is getting kind of old but we'll try that. I'm gonna take the fine tip off because I don't really need that fine of a tip. And we're just gonna have at it. Unless, of course, it's clogged. Hold on just a second. It wasn't clogged when I made the other one. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, come on. Uh, well, that just stinks, you guys. I don't have a pin right in front of me so we're gonna go with clam clam b <laughs> oh my gosh plan b scotch create glue stick okay and we're gonna be very liberal with this i'm gonna get a good bit of coverage on this just going all over this baby Hope you guys are all doing well today. I uh, watched that uh, video from Ruby and Pearl XO. I think they say XO. Maybe it's Hugs and Kisses. I don't know. But anyways, love the name. Um, and I thought, oh, that is so cool. But I'm thinking, I'm going to do it a little bit different. And that's what's so inspiring with the junk journal community is you learn things from other junk journalers and you're like, oh, wow. And then it kind of spurs your creativity. And I hope that's what I'm doing for you guys today. So I flipped over my page and lo and behold, it's almost exactly the size of my eight and a half by 11. Ha! And I didn't plan that for real, for real. So I'm just gonna smush that down. We're gonna do the same thing to the other side. All right. Getting kind of sticky here. Okay. That looks pretty good. I like to make sure I get a lot to make sure it's secured down. Put my lid on you know how bad i am at putting lids on things and then we're going to take this other gorgeous piece of paper here and put it on the other side easy enough right right okay and if you don't have a guillotine cutter uh you know use any other cutter you can eyeball it i'm just not good at eyeballing cutting because it just always turns out wonky. Just saying, just saying. So since um, this is one side of my cover, I want to make the other side, this, you know, the other side the same dimensions. So what I'm going to do is take that over to my guillotine cutter and cut away and hopefully I won't screw up. So hold on just a second. While I do this, you can hear that it was going through the um, envelope. So I'm going to do the other side. And if it's not exact, it's really no big deal. Really and truly, because this is a junk journal, right? Yes. All right, so I am, hold on, just hang with me a second. I'm going to mark down where to cut. And there we go. So, pretty dang good, right? Okay, now from here, you know, you could, I don't know, this could be my inside, interior, or the other side. But I am gonna 
keep it the same. So what I'm going to do is just fold this over and line it up right there and then take my wallpaper spreader or you you know you can use your mm, side of your scissors or a ruler or your score what do you call this I'm drawing a blank okay my score pal whatever that is okay now from here that looks great right but are we done no if you can see different there. So I'm just going to cut that off too. Because like I told you guys, I am cutting challenged. All right. Now, that looks fabulous. We're going to distress around the edges here because we're going with the distress theme, right? Yes, we are. All right, so I'm continuing on using my walnut stain. It's a deep color, deeper than like vintage photo. And I really like the um, contrast uh, that it gives the edges. So I'm gonna do that really quick. Around the whole thing on both sides. already looking cool. I don't know about you guys, but I just love the way the distressing just finishes off a page. I just think it, it, it looks complete to me. Not saying that, you know, you have to do that. That's just personal preference here. Now, what I'm going to do is I am going to sew around three edges leaving the side open and on the see that right there that did not get um that could, did not get glued down you just go in there and you can use your liquid glue but since mine's clogged i'll use this and make sure it's secured down let's see about the other side yep that is okay so i am going to pause the camera sew around like i said three edges so the folded edge right here and then the two sides leaving the center open and i'll be right back so hold on okay guys sewed around three edges and it looks fabulous on the inside you can see that it is fully lined with those delicate end papers which are just beautiful here so okay what I'm going to do is I'm going to mirror this for the other side, and then we're going to put our booklet together. So I'm going to clip the corners, round them with my corner rounder punch here. Another optional thing. I just like the, uh, it kind of makes it look like a cover to me. Mm. Okay, so it's going to be like this, right? So this is going to be my back. All right, so what I'm going to do is, you know my obsession with envelopes. I'm going to use another envelope. Oh, does that look cool or what? So we're going to make one just like this. And it's going to go like, so basically it's going to go like this, right? All right, so we're going to glue that down. And this one, I don't know. <laughs> this is too... Hershey Chocolate Corporation. Hershey PA. Don't you love that? Oh my gosh. And look where it's from. Whoa. It looks, um, I don't even know what that is. Dutch? German? I don't know. But that's way cool. So this particular envelope has an opening at the top, sort of. I thought it did. Oh, see, it was folded like that. So we're going to go with it like this. And another thing that um, I think looks really cool, and I learned this from, um, I saw this from Sheena over at Luna Rosu. Um, what she does to make things look grungy and distressed and old is she takes packing tape, just like this, packing tape and kind of just scrunches 
the whole thing up. So we're going to make this look like it was on there for a long time. So we're just going to scrunch it up. And then, there again, Distress City, guys. Now, this envelope is very fragile, so i got to be careful. I can't just go hog wild on the distressing without tearing it even more. But then I'd have to add more tape. <laughs> All right, so. And I like the way that edge just kind of sticks out there. That, that lends itself to the uh, grungy, distressed look of the whole whole journal that I got going on here. Okay, that looks fabulous. We're going to glue that down and I am going to glue it just on this side with some of my Fabri-Tac. Any liquid glue will work. This is just my go-to. Or you could use a glue stick. Just make sure it's secure. All right, so let me think about this before I glue it down. Okay, this is going to be the interior, right? So if you flip it over, this is the exterior. Now let's think about this here for a minute. My book is going to go together. We're going to have pockets there. We're going to have a pocket right here on the side. So, but the only thing I'm thinking of, you guys is we are going to be adding an exposed spine on this side. So, I don't know. See, this is where I think on the fly. I should have glued it on that end. Oh, dang. Because what's going to happen is I'm going to want to put something in here, but it may interfere with the spine. So we're going to have to go with another plan here. And that might be just having something across the top. And that's okay. That's perfectly fine. So what I'm talking about here is putting something there. And you could always add a little, um, where's my other one? Let's add some trim on there. All right, we're going to do that. Where's my trim? So if you think about it again, this is what I have to do. Yep, so it's going to have to go on this side. All right, well, dang. Oh, well, that's okay. It is okay, right? Oh, this is, see how fragile that is? Oh, but that's what makes them so cool. All right, so we're going to add some uh, trim on this end here. And then we're going to assemble our booklets. This is going to be fun. Let's see what I did on this side. It's right along the side there. Get that down. I cut off the edge here. This is harder to cut than it looks. That's weird. All right. Okay, so there is the front and the back of my booklet. Yippee! Okay, so now let's create some interior pages for our booklet. All right, so we're just going to have at it. And continuing on with the grungy theme, I'm going to be doing some tearing. I'm going to fold this guy in half, and actually you can fold it not necessarily in half, but kind of, you know, off-center, whatever. So there's one. I'm going to fold this one a little like that. See what I'm doing here? Oh, going rogue. <laughs> Put this one in there. Ooh, that looks just like that. And I had watercolor and uh, coffee dyed this page. Yay! All right. And you don't want to make this, in my opinion, too thick. So this is 
for this journal that I'm working on, it's going to be like um, a little booklet that you can stick either in a pocket or in between the spines or something along those lines. Okay, isn't that pretty? There's some more of that uh, writing book. I'm just gonna fold that over just because I think it's fabulous. All right, let's, let's see. I wanna use, I wanna use all these. Oh, these nuts, I just love looking at these. Ooh, a turban for $14.75. That was probably pretty expensive back then. <laughs> and then this cool guy. Just put that in there. Let's see what else. I don't know. Do that. And then you can always fold this over. And then... Should I use this? Of course I should, because it's fun. All right, now we're gonna cut, not cut, we're gonna tear. And I think I need another, do I have enough pages in here for writing? I've got one, two, I'm gonna use another one. This one has been really distressed, right? But that's cool. All right, so we're going to start just tearing away. And I like it where some of the uh, pages stick out of the sides, so I'm not going to, I mean, like that. Doesn't that look cool? I want to keep that. So go down this side here. And, of course, you have to save these, right? And some can be smaller, some can be larger. That's that's what that's kind of what I think is really cool about the whole grungy vibe, you know? Because and the distress look is it looks cool because it's not exactly the same. Oh wow. This is so cool. I'm just kind of going along the, um, you know, the outline of the, um, of the journal cover. Creating more scraps, of course, but that's okay. Because that's what junk journals are all about, is scraps. <laughs> now, what I was thinking, as I was tearing, no less, is, well, don't you want them distressed on both the top part of the page and the bottom? Well, yeah. So I'm wondering if I should tear some of the others, you know, a little bit more, which I might. I could have done this ahead of time, but I like talking to you guys. <laughs> It's like you're here with me. And it really is not taking that long anyways. All right. Oh, look at the goodies we have left over. Ho, ho. All right, so let's gather our book pages here. See what we got going. Move all my scraps out of the way. I don't know if I'm using this or not. I haven't decided. Maybe. All right. So we've got, there's all of our pages here. Right, where's my cover? Look how cool that looks. Isn't that neat? But I do need to tear this side. Oh man. You could use a tear ruler, which I have, which is way cool. Where the heck is that? Let me grab that. I don't know if you guys have seen these, you probably have. From we are memory keepers. It's a tear guide. And that is cool, too. What you do, this one's pretty torn. Let's see, let me find one that isn't. This one. Yeah, but that's sideways. I don't know. Maybe I don't need to, I don't need to tear anymore. But 
what was I saying I was going to show you? So <laughs> I need to tear something. All right, we'll tear this side. What you want to do is make sure that the words are facing up because there's um, like a rough edge and it's angled. So if you do it like this, it doesn't work or it doesn't work as well in my mind. So you hold it firmly down and pull kind of across and over the edge. There you go. All right. Okay, let's see what we got. And let's put our pages together. Okay, so we got, I like to vary uh, what goes next to each other. So if I have a distress page, then I'll put maybe, you know, something with writing and then a magazine page and then another distress page. Oh, that looks cool. And then maybe, yeah, let's see, maybe my ledger page. Another lined page, distressed page. All right, so we got two more things to put in here. Where does this guy go? What, is he, what does it look like? It looks good on top of that. Yeah, see, that looks really good. And then let's put the other magazine page somewhere, like right there, so that it's not right next to the other magazine page that's in here. All right, there you have it. It's coming together quick. Oh, dictionary page. No, I think I'm getting, you guys, I think I'm getting too thick. You don't want it real thick, okay? Because you know me, I like to add a lot of stuff. So then, let's see, the back, if I'm thinking correctly, <laughs> you gotta be smarter than the paper. <laughs> is like that. Oh, fabulous. All right, let's tear these down. A little extras on the side, right? And I like the fact that um, what girls ask about, hmm, do I want to tear that off? Oh, man, because that's a cool, that's a good manners and good form. Oh, wow. And this one little guy, I'm going to tear down just a tad. All right. More scraps. Okay. There we go. Look. Is that all good or what? Yes, it does. Looks fast. Okay, once you have your pages in the order you like, you're going to poke some holes into the pages. And what you want to do is find your center, and then, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put this on a corner here. And the reason I'm going to do that is we're going to be poking two holes. And I want this to be secure in the journal. And the two holes are gonna be, you know, approximately, where's my ruler? Oh, let me get my ruler here, guys. Approximately, let's see, how long is this journal? It's about a little over seven. So the holes are gonna be about maybe one and a half in from each of the edges. So with that being said, if this was in the center, it would might not hold as well. So I'm going to move that down just to make sure he gets poked with a hole. All right, so like I said, let's go back to finding the center. And this does not have to be exact. Because I, you can be as exacting as you want. I am going to clip my pages down so that they don't move all over the place when I'm poking my holes. Now this is a very thin booklet, like I said, so I just use my little awl here. I'm gonna measure a 
about an inch and a half from each side. I gotta move that guy down. About an inch and a half right there. And you just go through and you poke your hole. It's very easy to do. See? Just move it through there. And then we're going to do the same thing and keep these clipped because it just makes it easier when you're, sorry, I bonked the camera. When you're uh, trying to thread your binding material through the paper. It's not the end of the world if it moves around, but it just makes it easier. So there you have it. Now from here, I am going to use some ribbon. Now this ribbon I like because it goes, you know, the coloring is just a very pretty grayish blue. And I'm thinking I will be able to get this through. Now what I'm gonna do is kind of wrap it up and poke it through. See what happens. Yep, and it's gonna go through like that, see? So the ribbon that you choose, or you could use twine or string or anything like that, just make sure it's pretty, uh, pretty thin. Because believe me, I've tried to thread th thick things through small holes doesn't work too well. All right. And then, depending on how long you like your little tails of your ribbon, you just cut it off. And I like mine long because I like things to hang off here. So we're just going to cut this like that. And do the same thing to this side. Yeah, you could use embroidery th thread. There's so many things that you can use here. I just like the color of this blue. If I can get it to go through on this side like I did the other side, we'd be in good shape. Come on now. I gotta get it wrapped up in there. I know you're coming through there. I know you are. Jeez. Okay, this is giving me some issues, so hang there with me, guys. Don't give up on me yet. This is real world crafting, right? And what I have seen other people do is do um, like a thread and needle. All right, you guys, this is giving me some fits. All right, rather than have you guys watch me do this for five minutes, I'm gonna pause the camera, get it to go through, and I'll be right back. Hold okay, on, guys. Wouldn't you know it, as soon as I turn off the camera, it went right through. Oh, the day in the life of a YouTuber. Okay, and another thing that I did do is I added some more of that packing tape onto this um, receipt because it was, it was very fragile. So I wanna make sure that that's intact. Okay, so now this is going to be the interior of our book. Make sure I got my outsides like that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a spine. Now I am going to leave these little dudes on the clips, okay? Now what you're going to do is you're going to position your cover and your back. Excuse me, hold on a second here. Just trying to hold the pages together. You're gonna position your cover and your back so that they're even. Can you see that? Like that. 
and you want to make sure that your page, your signature, is flush with the back. All right, so that's what we're going to do. And what I did was I created two hinges, and these are fabric. You can also use paper, too. Although if you do use paper, I would use a thicker paper uh, because this is going to hold the whole thing together. This is a three-layered um, hinge, and there is that coffee stain, distress, um, oxide spray sheet, piece of lace, and then another, uh, this is actually a dress, this is a uh, champagne-colored silk. So I just sewed that together, and that's going to be our spine. What you're going to do is you're going to put your two pieces of your spine on the inside of your ribbon, okay? And you're going to glue each side down. So I am going to glue with Fabri-Tac on each side. There's one side there. And you want to space them out just a little bit. Mine are maybe a little bit too thick, but that's okay. I like that look. I'm going to add the other one here. Like that. And make sure they're stuck down. And you want to do the same thing on the other side. Doesn't that look cool? Isn't that fun? All right. And making sure that everything is still flush meaning it's the same on each side. We're going to do the same thing on this side. And you don't have to pull it tight. You can do it a little loose if you'd like. I'm going to do it a little tight just because I don't want my um, uh, journal to flop around. But if you want, you can keep it loose and you can add a lot of things onto the interior of the book. So I am going to glue this side down. Same thing on this. Come on. And then... Flip that back over, and there is your book. Now see, it's kind of moving around here. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold that down to make sure it gets all... Come on. You know, all secured down. I want to do the ends here just to make sure it's going to hold, right? Right, do the same thing on the other side, making sure I got everything so it's stuck down and it's not going to go flying everywhere. I might even take some up towards the spine up here. I just want to make sure it's secure. All right, and that looks pretty dang good. Okay. Now from here, what's going to hold this all together is I am going to remove my clippies now. And what's going to hold this all together is this ribbon. And like I said, it's on the exterior of each of the two hinges, right? And you can pull it if you want, or you can leave it the same, depending on where you want your ribbon closure is. You can do it towards the top or towards the middle. I'm kind of like in the middle. And you do want to pull it kind of tight, not too tight so that you're, you know, wrecking the pages on the interior. But... 
I pull it kind of tight and then we're gonna tie a knot here or excuse me tie a bow if I can do this while still holding my ribbon tight and then you can fiddle around with you know if you want your tails any longer or shorter and there you have it now look at this isn't this fabulous what I am going to do off camera is I'm going to distress the edges further but if you look at it there is your journal your little booklet isn't that cool oh with the open spine the exposed spine and it's okay that it moves a little bit because that's kind of the point right um i think that looks really cool so i am gonna let that dry but before you go so we have our two envelopes on the front and this is just what i like to do you know me and postcards i grabbed some postcards and I made this journaling card here with one of the book plates that uh, we created a couple days ago. And it just made a pocket up at the top where I put some ephemera in. And that's gonna go right on that side. And then on the other side, remember that I'm kinda uh, had to glue that side down, but you've got a pocket up at the top for some more ephemera. I mean, the sky's the limit. You know, you keep keep adding stuff. Oh, that looks really good. I might have to do that. But there you have it. All right, you guys. Well, I hope this has inspired you like I get inspired by all the other lovely YouTubers out there. And give it a go. Try your hand at making an exposed spine booklet. Yay! That has envelope pockets. All right. And then, oh wait, not even. Oh, I forgot that we have even more pockets. Look at that. Right there on the front. And what do I have to put in the back? But another postcard on the interior. Look at that on the back side. So it's got all sorts of pockets in it too. So this is like a little cute journal in itself. Isn't that cool? <sighs> Yay. So thank you for hanging with me. I apologize for me not being able to get the thread through on camera, but you know, it is what it is. And I know you guys will forgive me for that. So anyways, I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope this has inspired you and go out and make yourself an open spine envelope pocket booklet. So have a wonderful day, guys. Thank you for watching. Bye.